Hey guys, this is Jason here in Oxford, Ohio, coming at you from the farm, raising grass-fed Red Devon cattle, St. Croix sheep and chickens here, and uh, doing a rotational grazing system. A very quick video today, I wanted to show these two very small, what I consider very small, raised garden beds. Uh, these are just simply eight by eight, uh, two by sixes, I believe, screwed together. We did that several years ago, and uh, we grew carrots in these two beds here. Uh, planted those early in the spring, and uh, those carrots were harvested. We had a wonderful, wonderful harvest. And uh, I've had the, had the rams over this way. We've got our two, two full-grown uh, herd sires there, different bloodlines, uh, those two there. And then we've got seven 90-day-old uh, uh, ram lambs that are running with these guys. And you know, this time of year, we have to keep them separate. Uh, we'll put uh, our uh, herd sires in uh, probably mid-November uh, to make our mid-April lambs. But I wanted to show this very, very simple, very, very small raised garden bed setup. I, I know um, we do a very large, I, I consider it large for our family, but uh, I don't guess it's that large. Under, you now it's under quarter acre garden over there. And we've got a system uh, where we do cover crops over the winter, then graze it with ewes, come behind it with chickens, and then use a black landscape fabric. But I thought, you know what? We should show uh, just the two very simple raised garden beds that we do. Now, we harvested carrots from these two, and then uh, wife is wanting to put garlic in here. Now, garlic doesn't get planted until later on in the fall, and so uh there's a there's a time lapse there right between when you harvest the carrots and uh, when the garlic goes in and so we sowed this warm season cover crop in these two beds here and it has just this is a warm season grazing mix and it has just done phenomenal here you can see the the white flowers of the buckwheat their sorghum mung beans uh purple top turnips um uh, brassicas there's brassicas down in there just just lots of really uh, great stuff and uh, you can see this is about waist high now it's uh, about two o'clock now in the afternoon and i just turned these guys loose uh in these beds here but we're gonna we're gonna graze this down we'll probably get maybe two grazings uh out of this and then the idea is we're gonna let them eat this all the way down and then we'll come in probably after the second graze and we'll just go right over top of, of just the very small stubble with the black landscape fabric. And then we'll plant uh, straight into that. We'll do our, our crop. And so I just wanted to show this because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop back here later this afternoon and just see how long it, it takes them to terminate this. But this is no mow, okay? No mechanically mowing, uh, no mechanical tillage here. Uh, again, this diverse cover crop mix is going to give us uh, a very good root exudates, those root sugars. Uh, those are going to grow our underground herd, uh, our microbes, and those microbes are just going crazy and they're making us organic matter in the soil. Okay, so as we grow this, uh, we're, we're improving the soil with that diverse cover crop mix. Now, when they graze this down, you know, they, they will not terminate it. They'll, they'll eat it all the way to the ground, um, but it will grow back. And so we'll get a second graze off of it, but uh, we'll let them take it way, way down that second time. And then we'll just come right over top uh, with that landscape fabric and plant straight into it. And uh, I just wanted to show this today because I want to encourage you, even on a small scale gardening system, you know, you can still do this stuff. Uh, you can still do it and, and do a no-till do a no, a no mechanically mowing. Um, you know, you look at uh, the back end of these guys uh, right there. See the pallets they put out? I mean, those are better than miracle Grow. okay? I, I just look at them as like a timed release fertilizer pellet. You know, these guys, are, these guys are taking that forage all the way down, clipping the forage for you, and then putting fertilizer out the back. I mean, what else, <laughs> what else could you want? Making meat at the same time. Uh, that's the name of the game here. But, uh, you know, what we do when we do these, these systems in the garden with cover crop, uh, we, leave that, we leave that living root in the ground. We don't pull it up. We don't till it up. Okay, you leave that living root in there, and then we're going to go straight over that with the landscape fabric, and that's going to terminate uh, that, that cover. 
uh, when we do that, and what you're left with is all of that organic matter, uh, all of those root fibers and hairs, okay, that have opened up uh, the, the soil and, and made pores for water infiltration, uh, okay, and then your, your root uh, material, your root, uh, that when it dies back, you're left with that organic matter. So, you know, I, I just wanted to show just a smaller scale um, take on... Uh, raised bed gardening. Now, I, I doubt that I would bring these guys in here if it had just rained a whole bunch. Um, yeah, we, I, I don't feel like we've ever uh, really struggled with compaction, especially with the lighter, uh, the lighter uh, rams there. The, the the younger ones there, 90 days old. I don't feel like compaction is an issue. But if it had just rained, I probably would hold off. And uh, we're we're not dry right now, but we're not soaking soaking wet either. So this is a this is a fit right now. And uh, you know, two two grazings out of that stuff, plus the uh, improvements to your soil health, uh, plus you know, not having to really. I mean, it's about the netting, right? You got to get netting over here. You got to have fresh water, and then they do the rest. Um, and uh, you know, as I say with our use, meat, milk, and more babies uh, off of grass alone, and, and fertilizer out the back end. I, I I don't know what else you could want. But uh, again, about two o'clock now when we're turning them out on this stuff, let's, uh, we'll keep time here and uh, I'll check back in. Okay, so coming back here later on in the evening, it's been between six and seven hours. We actually just moved the rams, uh, the rams onto a new uh, little section there. Uh, those cattle are on the other side of the electric fence, so they're not a part of our little, our little grazing party here, but I uh, wanted, just wanted to point out uh, tonight that there is a place uh, for small ruminants uh, on the uh, small raised bed gardening systems. Uh, pretty cool when you can integrate them, building soil health. You know, they've, they've taken this, I mean, look at this, taken this all the way down, trampled a bunch, a uh, bunch of fertilizer, you know, in there, as well as uh, we've talked about the, uh, the even the saliva of ruminants being microbially rich and uh, stimulating uh, all kinds of microbe growth. But uh, this was, uh, like I said, we did carrots here first, then we did the cover crop, um, and then we'll come in with garlic. Cover crop uh, was sown about maybe a month, a month to six weeks ago, somewhere in there, right after carrots were done in late spring. Uh, it was more like early summer. And then, uh, you know, like I say, uh, sewing that cover and uh, getting those ruminants on it. Um, yeah, these guys are doing great here. Really pleased with this, uh, this ram lamb uh, grow out this year. Very, very clean on the backsides and uh, just thriving on uh, all grass pasture. That's what we breed for here. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Hope you are well uh, wherever you are, and uh, we will talk to you next time. Take care.